Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to episode six. Drea and I are going to be talking about our hair tour unplugged virtual edition class and course. We really believe that nothing can get created overnight. So we are here to walk you through some of the things and key takeaways from our hair tour unplugged course and session. Drea, how's it going, girl? Yes. Hi. Uh, well said. Thanks everyone for listening and welcome to a successful stylist Academy podcast. Um, I'm Drea and nothing gets created overnight. And I think we really wanted to come on here and share a little bit about that. We have, um, gratefully and thankfully gotten some really, really great feedback on our hair tour unplugged virtual edition and just the videos and the content, which feels really, really nice. But I think it's easy to be like, thank you. Yes, that's great. But this has literally been almost three years in the making. My gosh, so much in the making. (laughs) We really want to um, encompass like serving, creating, and growing because that's what we do in our industry, right? It's like in order to be able to scale and grow, we have to be able to pick up some, um, you know, things outside of our industry. We have to be able to achieve more than just doing really amazing hair because we all know that that's like a very, it's a specific fragment and something much larger, right? And in order for us to grow, we really have to develop other skill sets and it kind of starts from the inside out, right? And so we kind of talk about our process and how you can get there. And just even getting that finished product, I mean, how do you get that finished product and how can you get the right audience to do that? So I feel like the top takeaways, like if I were to just like encompass everything into Hair Tour Unplugged is to talk about like, obviously we have the technical side of things, which I think in a nutshell, we really wanted to make sure that you guys had some things that you can bring back to the chair with you in the salon. We feel like those boho vibes, we feel like getting and understanding the technical side of the boho trends and how it's evolved and changed in our industry and how we can take it back and just make it into modern techniques for our clients instead of going like super editorial or going too literal with the 70s boho vibes, right? And so we, I feel like both Dre and I really really tried to pull the majority of the things that we're doing behind the chair from dry cuts to texturizing to um, creating a curtain fringe to even just like longer layers and just giving that swept look. I feel like a lot of that was done in a way that it can really encompass a wider range of clients. It's not just those who are looking for those boho looks. Wouldn't you say that's true, Drea? Yeah. I mean, tracing back a little through what you said, I mean, serve, create, grow was like where we started with our inspiration, along with the fact that just as hairstylists, those, the hats that we wear are just accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. And you and I now being in the industry, almost both 20 years, I feel like we really wanted to take what we do, like you said, beautifully from the inside to the outside, just 100% full circle. So that was going to be, you know, serve remembering that we serve people. We are in this beautiful service industry where we get to pay it forward to our peers, who I know um, is a huge, has been a huge part of the learning process for me and people who have kind of freely given information Um, serving our clients, what is the absolute best way that we can translate that to stylists to be able to go back in in the chair, um, behind the chair and serve our clients, growing together and then creating, which is really that technical side of things. And as you mentioned, um, the boho vibes are not going away. Curtain fringe, hottest trend happening almost right now with cutting a fringe. So we really wanted to make sure that Um, as you said, Ambrosia, that we were giving you something that is right now in a way that you can just go back and use it immediately behind the chair on your clients to offer you tools for success right away. Yes. Right away, guys. I mean, the thing, uh, the thing with boho is that it's definitely not a trend. And I think we sometimes want to like pigeonhole ourselves into offering something that's like trending for our clients because it's exciting for us. But the longer you've been in this industry, the more you'll see the cyclical action where it just keeps coming back to revisit you. And you just take little tiny tweaks and changes on it. So that way you're kind of like, so, so to speak, rebirthing it so that it feels new and fresh 
and young for your clients, but also relevant to fitting your client's needs. And I think that's what it's all about is that we are not reinventing the wheel here. We don't have to come up with brand new trends and techniques for our clients. We're just taking some things that we know foundationally, and then we're adding in other tools on top of it. So that's kind of where Olivia Garden stepped in. We were able to use a lot of their tools to elevate our craft and to show you like the differences between different shears and the difference between doing a razor cut and using texturizing shears. I feel like that's one of those big things that is important as a stylist that we keep evolving in the growth of our tools and being able to utilize and maximize those tools to the best of our abilities. So um, what were your favorite parts, Drea, as far as like the techniques that you were showing? Because you kind of had you had this whole blowout thing. You also were showing like elevating it to an editorial level and kind of showing ways that you can do it within the salon. And then you also had your fringe that you were cutting and you showed a lot of really awesome takeaways from that. Do you feel like of the things that you showed, do you use all that stuff behind the chair or is it mostly that you do different elements of it depending on the craft of like who you're designing it for? Uh, thank you. And both really, I pretty much everything that we showcase within this, I feel like at one time or another, I'm using it in some type of fashion behind the chair. Absolutely. I really wanted to be very raw and real and offer up things that are currently working for me really, really well in the salon um, as takeaways for, you know, any of our viewers whatsoever. I, um, one of the things I think that was my favorite was sharing my, my signature boho blowout. And I think it's really, really important to not only have these techniques, but to create and utilize them in a way that are signature items on our custom creation menu. So it really gives us the opportunity to not only have this like great, you know, technical blowout or whatever it might be to showcase on a client that needs something different that we need to kind of just take to the next level and not just be reaching for the same tools as creatures of habit, which we are even in an industry of change. Um, but to be able to take that to a point where we're creating something on a menu, we're doing something in a way that immediately allows our clients to see that we're doing something different and then still having this incredible finish. So um, I really love sharing the boho blowout. I use several of the Olivia Garden tools they really um, make that more of a custom service. And I had the opportunity to say, okay, like not what brush am I just grabbing and reaching for in my drawer that I always do my blowouts with, but um, what do I reach for? Why do I reach for it? How is it an extension of my hand? How does it set me up for success? And why is it the tool that I would use based upon the end result that I want to get. So I kind of like to add all those little fine tuned details in. The signature look is amazing because you could create signatures around everything. And I think it's important for our clients because it makes them feel fresh, relevant and important. And that's what we want to do. I mean, that's the most important thing that we are serving to our clients behind the chair. It's not just creating a really beautiful look, but it's also making them feel like a rock star or feel like their day is made and it keeps things fun for us. I mean, let's, let's face it. Like we're, you know, doing some repetitive things behind the chair on a regular basis and to keep things fresh and exciting for us, having those things that are customizable is it really makes it feel like it's something going through growth and change and all that kind of stuff too. Anything to help combat that hairdresser ADD. I tell you, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I know. And when you were when you were talking about the extension of your hand, I was literally imagining like uh, these <laughs> like tools coming out of your hands or whatever, which is super creepy. But at the same time, it's like, and Pierre, we have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> seriously it's almost like a swiss army knife just like coming out of your hand i don't know whatever anyway but for sure like before all this before i gained all this knowledge with different tools i literally had three brushes three round brushes and they like were all hairy and nasty and like in the bottom of my drawer like the type that you had to like turn the chair away from the drawer so that you could open the brush and they couldn't see that I had hair on it like how embarrassing <laughs> so to have those different tools is super key it's one of those things it's like when you get like brand new workout clothes before and it just like encourages you to go work out like you just like I can't wait to work out in this or wear it and just pretend that you're working out I don't know whatever <laughs> but the tools make a big difference okay 
So anyway, I'm getting off track. So uh, that was one part of it. It was like the technical side. The other side of this conversation was all about the things that happen on the back end of our industry, which is like that added skill set that we need to have. And it's super important to have those conversations, to understand the difference between social media, understand the difference between algorithm and SEO, and then just being able to manage your insights in a way that works for you. And uh, we have a lot, I feel like we have a lot of takeaways for that. I think we have a lot of information to give you guys. And so not to overwhelm you. I think it's good. Drea, I think you and I should probably talk a little bit about some of the things that we uncovered that resonated with the both of us. And just even in the process of coaching other people, I mean, we're able to kind of systematize, look at their stuff and tell them based on your insights, this is what you should be focusing on for now. This is where you want to head. This is who you're um, gravitating toward audience wise. And uh, this is why you're going to be doing it. Because I think that's the thing is that people lose track of like that why piece. It's so easy to look at like what other people are doing and compare what you're not doing. And I think that's the main thing is like, don't compare what other people are doing because their goals and objectives might be so different than yours. So I think that's like worth saying or mentioning. Let's talk a little bit about that, Drea. Like, let's talk a little bit about what we feel are like some key things that people just should be in the know of. And then they can learn more about it, obviously. Uh, Download that Hair Tour Unplugged. We'll tell you exactly where to go for that. Um, Obviously, if you visit our show notes, you'll see that below. But let's just talk a little bit about some of those key things. So big for me, which I thought, I mean, you took the lead on the social side um, and that's what this second part of. So aside from the Boho Vibes technical, we did unplugged conversations on the couch, hanging out, and we focused on social and we focused on mindset. And again, going from the inside out, like what are the hats we wear? What do we need to cover? So as you're talking about social and you kind of took the lead on that, Ambrosia, I really feel like what was cool is this would be something that you are stronger at. And for me, I always want a little bit more information on social. So we really got to like partner in that and play off of one another. So I want to let you guys know one of the really cool things that we found was you'll go take a social media class and you get all of this information. And if you're anything like me, they're talking in terminology that you don't quite capture and you feel a little silly. So you don't want to ask the questions in front of everyone, your eyes glaze over whatever. And there's two things that happen that happens and you disconnect because you're already lost and you're overwhelmed or you get really excited about some information that you're given, but then it's assumed that you're going to know how to apply that information and it's not given to you. So some of the things that we found that I think are awesome is you really shared the why. So it wasn't like, Hey, go to your insights and do this or that. It's like insights are SEO versus algorithm. SEO is algorithm is. And I think you really broke into some of those details that allow people who um, might not be quite where you are or other people are, or even I am to follow along and to find their footing. And then you still shared information for those people who are um, maybe a little more advanced in what they're doing social media to where it was like, great, these are what insights are. Now here's how you can best utilize them and read them and use them to your advantage. So I really think that was, a cool strength that anyone at any level is going to get takeaways from. Yeah. The main thing about insights, I mean, what are insights? Insights basically tell us and show us a snapshot of who is consuming our information. Who is it relevant to? Where does it serve its purpose best? And how can you focus your time and attention best on things? Because it breaks down everything. It shows your patterns. It shows you what times are best to be on there. It shows you who your audience is, like whether what your demographic is, where they're located even. And then it shows you some of your other analytics, which are really important to see, like, What's getting the best view time? What's getting saved the most? What's getting sent to other people that are relevant? And uh, maybe it's getting more time and attention because for the longest time when it came to social media, so to speak, it was just the main focus was just 
going off of like your likes and comments. It really is the least important right now to today's standards. I think one of the main things to keep in mind right now uh, that's rolling out and will continue to roll out for Instagram, this is very exciting for everyone listening, but you now no longer will have to have 10,000 followers to have that swipe up option. <laughs> Drea just got really excited. So it's just one of those arbitrary goals that's not as important anymore. It's not placing emphasis on the vanity metrics as much. It will start rolling out to certain creators first before it's available to the public. So it will be happening in a trickle effect. Trickle effect just basically means that it's not available to everyone all at once. But what's awesome about that is that if you are relevant, and when I say relevant, what I mean is are you posting on a regular basis? Are you active on social media? Are you socializing with other people? Here's the thing, guys. You, what you post is less important than who you are reaching. Okay. So just try to handle things in two different places. Like you have two buckets. One bucket is like what you're creating and who you're sharing it to. The other bucket is who are you making relationships with and who are you trying to reach? So having commentary and just being able to have those open dialogues and relationships with your clients and the people who follow you are going to be more important. As long as you focus your efforts on that first and less on the things that you're putting out there, you will have a higher reach, even if you don't have higher followers. So that's the important piece to keep in mind is that those vanity metrics of those likes, comments, and how many people are following you are going to become less important and what's going to become more important are your strategies, who you're reaching, understanding your analytics and being consistent with your posting schedules, being consistent with your like interaction with other people. So this should feel really empowering right now because you no longer have to worry about defeating like, oh, well, I have a thousand followers. I'm nowhere even close to 10,000 followers. I'm never going to get that swipe up. So it feels very daunting and debilitating. So knowing that Instagram is going to be rolling that out and they're going to be kind of like cutting off that like big goal, that looming goal that you have to get should feel like, okay, this is nice. I can take things in bite-sized pieces. I can focus on what I'm doing now and what I'm doing well. And if you're not sure about it, that's the reason why so many of us have gotten into the coaching realm, right? Drea has been helping a lot of independent artists. She's has um, Meet Me at the Runway, which is kind of an awesome, I'm, I'm plugging that in for you, Drea. And I have been coaching hairstylists for years now on just how to manage their business and let's face it, like online, your presence that you're showing, that's also an extension of your business. And so being able to do that more efficiently so that you can have balance in your life, have more time and make more money, it can be all done, but you have to have strategies around it, right? Good stuff. And uh, thank you for that info drop because um, that's been like the bane of my Instagram existence is, you know, promoting workshops and doing the indie education and not having the swipe up and being someone who is very, very adamant about the quality of connection over the quantity of connection and trusting that that will come if you're using your authentic voice. Otherwise, you are reaching the people that you reach. And that is still very valuable and very impactful, but kind of needing that tool all along. So that is great news. And not comparing yourself is one thing that you mentioned. And I'm talking about um, just the quality of connection and interaction, which kind of brings us to our last thing that we've really shared within our Hair Tour Unplugged virtual edition. And that was social and mindset. And mindset was kind of one of my favorite things to talk about and share a little bit because there's so many elements that make us so much stronger in our craft when that has like a solid balance. And um, so maybe we can dive into like a couple of the topics that we touched base on and the social that um, you just shared, Ambrosia, you guys, that's just a little taste, like a little, a little tiny taste of what's in the, the social portion just to kind of really set you up for success and, um, you know, connect for maximize exposure within all of your platforms. So super, super exciting. Um, but yeah, the mindset part I think is huge. And we talked about finding your why, moving with intention, that we have to stop comparing callings, which is one thing that you touched on already, Ambrosia, and how important it is 
for us to really um, use our own authentic voice and know what that looks like and not look around at other people before we make a move. And um, we can't pour from an empty cup. And we also talked about healthy boundaries. So whether that's you know, with our clients or personal, it really just exp- extends to every part of our of our lives, I think, personally and professional professionally. So when we can be successful in those areas, we're just going to be more impactful with everything that we do. Um, one of the really big ones for me was moving with intention. And I think a lot of us can be just, I don't know, we can kind of just let our calendars or our feelings or whatever it might be, just take us for a ride throughout our day, throughout our week, throughout our month and get on autopilot. And one of the conversations that Ambrosia and I had when we first started um, planning to do this hair tour unplugged, which originally started as a six city tour before the world shut down and it got canceled and now is in the virtual form that you see um, was really residing within our resolve and letting go of the result. And that's one thing that I wanted to share today and encourage everyone because I've been able to follow through with that through this process. And being in the resolve is just means to me like sticking to your why, doing the process and being present within it, not focused on the end result, how many of these that we're going to sell, how many people are going to see it, but really like what, why are we doing this? What is the quality of information we're sharing? How are we paying forward? Like our knowledge, our experience, how are you and I coming together? That is the resolve. And when you do that, you get to move beautifully through your process. You get to invite other people in. And when you focus on the result, you're not living in the present. You're living in the future. You put pressure on yourself. Yeah. So it's just, um, just has been so huge for me to develop something and collaborate as an artist with another amazing artist and not ever get caught up in the end result allowed me to be beautifully present for the entire process. So these are some of the conversations that that we have with you guys and share with you guys. Yeah. You are so good at that, Drea. I feel like being present is a tough one for a lot of us because we are always, we have our eye on the prize. Like what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next. And so it's so easy to like get caught up in that whole game that we create for ourselves. And I think taking a step back to really I think identify the fact that we're doing it is one thing, but then understanding that like, okay, I am focusing on like the future and I'm so focused on it that it's hard for me to even enjoy what's happening now. Um, I mean, there've been so many times in my life throughout my career, even that I'm focusing on the next thing so much to the fact that like, even when I achieve my goal, I don't even celebrate it. I don't even enjoy it because in my mind, I achieved that goal before I even got there. That's dangerous, guys, because not only do you can you hit burnout, but it's also put you in a place of constantly comparing because all you're doing is measuring yourself to something else, whatever that thing is. It could be measuring yourself to who you think you should be, measuring yourself to where you want to be, measuring yourself to another person. Like those are all really unhealthy places to be. And I can say firsthand that's something that I struggled with in my career earlier on. Um, even up until, you know, the whole world shut down and things were forcing us to change that focus and shift into other things. But I, that's one of the things I admire about Drea, because I feel like you have been able to really take pauses and moments and breaks to recognize that. And you're also very similar to me in that, like, you just want to make sure that you're always having fun. Like you're enjoying it. You've got to be enjoying the process because if you're not, then you're doing something's wrong. Something's something's gone awry. And it's really important to check in with that, I think. Yes. And the fun part, I mean, it is so fun to be in the resolve and it puts so much pressure and it allows for the opportunity for so much disappointment to be focused on that result. So that is that is a game changer. Um just putting small things into practice every day to make sure that you're moving with intention and you're present, I think is huge. And I know we, I know we dive into that even more in kind of our social and mindset. So I'm really excited for you guys to 
um, I'll just kind of check that out and hear, hear even more on that. Here's a thing that I think it's really important to keep in mind when it comes to creating something. Um, you know, Dre and I just got through like going on a rant about how important it is to being in the moment and being present, all those things. Yes, it took us three years to get here to this point where we were able to deliver you this hair torn plug that has all this really amazing meaty information in it. But the thing is, is that we really took our time to make sure that we were delivering information that was going to be relevant to the average stylist behind the chair, that we were able to gather resources. So that way, again, relevant, like we're not, not for somebody who wants to be like, a insta famous stylist or not for somebody who um, is going after something that is, you know, this huge goal, because here's the thing. We, we can all set our own goals. We can all dream really big. And that's something that we're really passionate about. We want to have big dreams. I mean, we even say for the podcast, dream big, set goals, take action. Like we're really, really wanting to encourage that. But how do you get the small little rungs to be able to get to that top piece? And so those types of tiers is something that we're really focusing on and making sure that we were delivering something in a way that's tangible assets, tangible goals to be able to deliver. And so when you're listening to this, when you actually go on to, and this is on SuccessfulStylistAcademy.com, when you go on there and you actually open this up, not only are you going to be able to watch on your own time, which is, I think, really important. But you also get to pick and choose what it is that you want to watch and revisit. You can check in with those and just, you know, use it as a gauge. Use it as a, as a, I guess, kind of like a roadmap on how you can make sure that you're delivering all those touch points for your business and doing it in a way that feels like, okay, I feel empowered to do this because of this. And sometimes it just takes a moment. You just want to step back listen in, write it out, speak it to the universe, start putting those into action. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I'm actually gaining momentum here with my goals. And so then that's different because it's like, you're putting those actions into process. You're not thinking of like, gosh, I'd really love to have this someday, just someday, any day, just out there in the universe. It's great to say those things, but then you got to put those into action. And once you start putting those into action, that wheel starts a moving. That wagon's a rolling. No, <laughs> get the wagon rolling, folks. <laughs> get the wagon rolling. I love that. I mean, it, it is. It's just all the little puzzle pieces that go together and not trying to like look at the whole dang puzzle, but just being like, here's the piece I have to work with. Like, what can I do with what's in my hands right now? Um, and knowing it's just beginning to manage that first, manage that information first, manage what you have in your hands first before we want to fill it with like more stuff or whatever it might be. I think even connecting with the right people too. I think that's a huge thing. Like connecting with the right people is going to help you with elevating what, what it is that you're trying to go toward, what you're working toward. But it's also one of those things that can kind of hold you accountable. It keeps you focused. You get to move through it with a community so you don't feel so alienated and alone. This is especially important if you are a suite or booth renter, because sometimes it could feel like, gosh, uh, I'm on my own journey by myself with myself. And that can feel a little daunting, right? It could feel heavy at times. So I think it's really important to get your people. And how do you find those people? Make sure you do it with ones who are already putting themselves out there. If they're putting themselves out there, then they're open to receiving and they want to be a part of something. So that's the biggest reason why Successful Stylist Academy was formed, honestly, because it's not the Drea show. It's not the Ambrosia show. It's not individuals. It's all about getting together as a community, being able to process information together, to bounce ideas off of one another, to share experiences and expertises with one another and elevate each other's craft. I mean, how, how amazing is that? There's the thing is, it's like, imagine there's a huge pie out there, right? And you can slice that pie up so many different ways and we can all have a piece of it. But as soon as you get to a place where you are not slicing off pieces for yourself and for others, then you could start to feel like, 
being taken advantage of, or you feel like maybe you're alone, or you feel like, um, you know, there's a threat that's out there and you're not really sure. And so they have trust. It's a hard, you have a hard time trusting others. So if you always have that mentality, then you will bring in others who have that same mentality. It is so easy. It's so easy once you're receptive to it, You ha- but you have to be open to that. Right. And so I think that's the thing is that finding those people is less difficult than you might think once you go toward those who have their arms open and they're inviting you in already. The community is so key. And one thing that I've learned in the process of building my community is let it take a minute. Um, I think in our, in our industry, in our culture, it's all about making fast friends. And that is not always the best way to go about it. Sometimes amazing things are going to take a little while to build. And it's okay to kind of start something with somebody and then realize maybe you're not 100% within the same philosophy. And that doesn't mean you still can't support one another. Uh, But it's so important to have those people. And also, it's been nice for me to let things go if they don't build as quickly or as strongly as I had first anticipated. Again, that resolve versus versus the result. And when you were talking, I was like, Ooh, I want to get real cheesy and do this little African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I, I don't know. It just resonates with me. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Thanks, Drea. Yes. You guys know, I love quotes anyway, and quotes kind of help me get myself back in like the right headspace. But it's also like a really great reminder. You can sum everything up into like a bumper sticker. Like if you can sum things up into a bumper sticker, then you don't have to overthink it on whether or not it's the right or wrong thing to do. Right. So as long as you can kind of sum that up into a little phrase or something, a mantra or a proverb, like what Andrea was saying, or a quote, something that feels right, that resonates with you don't overthink it, just go with it and be open to not knowing how it's going to turn out on the other end. Because I mean, there's been so many times that I've gone after something and I have in my mind how it's going to go. Yeah. Sometimes it reaches that. And when it does, I find it a little anticlimactic just because I already knew how it was going to go. So maybe that's a reminder to myself that that wasn't a big goal that I was going toward. Maybe it was just like a stair step goal. And so I think oftentimes it's the ones that we don't know the end result to that were like, I would love to have this, you know, throw it out in the universe. Like I want to have a million dollar, million dollar home on a, a two acre lot, or, you know, just like get very specific on what you're looking for and how do I get there? Well, it's not the getting there part, it's the stuff that you're doing in the meantime to make sure that you're aligning with that future self and who that person is. So really good key points. So good. I love that. Yes. And I mean, not knowing is scary, but it requires trust. It requires other people. So community again, and even though it's scary, it's also really exciting. So there's that fun and vulnerability. That's a whole nother podcast. (laughs) Vulnerability. <laughs> that's taking fine tuning for me because I, I mean, vulnerability, that's a hard thing to do to really put your, to really put yourself out there and to really allow yourself to be vulnerable. Because if you suffer from perfectionism or if you were raised in a way that what you were doing wasn't good enough or you weren't, you know, quite enough or whatever, it's those. Yeah. I, I think we should have a podcast on that actually. A whole nother. Yeah. That's a whole nother 30 minutes. But, you know, you said, just not overthinking it, summing it up. So to kind of touch on that, like a little bit of a recap, almost three years ago, even though you see these fun little cute professional videos that I'm just going to say we're really proud of. um, We started this almost three years ago to do a six city tour, um, hair tour unplugged and travel around. It got completely shut down with the rest of the world. And after we kind of like came out of, of hiding and everything, we decided to take it virtual community. Um, for us also looked like the support completely of Olivia garden and sponsoring us and being right there, like every step of the way, encouraging us, um, use, utilizing their amazing tools. And then also, um, Kronos, which is a virtual AI booking assistant to make your life easier as a hairstylist behind the chair. And again, help with one of those other hats. Um, three years in the making. And what 
one thing that I did want to want to share staying on the cheesy note Les Brown actually states that the graveyard is the richest place on earth because it's there that you will find all the hopes and all the dreams that were never fulfilled the books that were never written the songs that were never sung the inventions that were never shared the cures that were never discovered all because someone was too afraid to take that first step or keep with the problem or to be determined to carry out their dream. And anytime I start something and I start something hard and I don't know how it's going to be and I don't know how it's going to be received and um, I'm scared and I don't feel like I can do it or I feel like someone is already doing it better than me. So why would I put it out there? This is something that I remind myself of. And this is something that I try to practice what I preach and stay true uh, to myself. So Thank you for partnering with me with this Ambrosia because this was a beautiful opportunity where I was able to um, execute that, to just be afraid and and to do it anyway. And I wanted to kind of just uh, recap and let our audience know with this encouragement and if they're trying to put something out there and also, you know, what they can find exactly um, within our Unplugged Workshop. Oh man. Thank you, Drea. That I loved that quote. That's so sweet. Like it kind of choked me up a little bit hearing that. I was like, oh my gosh, it's so true. I think it, it's hard to put yourself out there and to stick with it during the hard, the hard, rough parts, especially when you aren't exactly sure how to get there. Sometimes it's really easy to get just stuck in A and then you can't move into B. And so that's what Territory Unplugged does. I mean, we really show you guys how to break apart specific things uh, and just creating manageable goals to achieve that end result. And you get that both with technical, you get it with the support with SEO and understanding the different social media platforms. And then you also get it in your mindset because sometimes that's the hardest obstacle to get around is like what our brains are telling us we can or can't do that limiting belief. And so being able to just work around some of that stuff, maybe there's going to be something that I say or that Drea says that's going to be uh, resi- that will resonate with you. And so that's really our main goal is we want to make sure that we're providing you guys with something that is tangible that you can actually apply right away. It doesn't be, it's not like you have to reach 10,000 followers to be able to do the swipe up, you know? That's not what this is about. This is about something where no matter what level you are sitting in, you have something that is tangible that you can like push the pause button and you can actually go out and do, and then you can pick it right back up again. So make sure that you visit us uh, at Successful Stylist Academy uh, that's on social. And then make sure you also visit our website, SuccessfulStylistAcademy.com. Go after that hair tour unplugged. Uh, course, make sure you download that and just start watching it right away. And I'm sure you guys will walk away with at least one thing. Um, You know, if anything I've learned is that even when you go for something, just try to be open to receiving information. You will always get at least one thing, one takeaway. Um, Obviously, I hope you get more than one takeaway from from the Hair Torn Plug since we cover so many things. But um, we also have another one that we're going to be releasing to you guys as well. So lots of information that we're giving your way with all of our combined 40 plus years of experience that we're putting in to this. Ah, <laughs> I know. Ah, that sounds scary. But at the same time, guys, we've got a lot of stuff that we're giving to you and we want to make sure that we're inviting you into our circle, into our community. Our arms are open. We do love the cheese factor, but we're, we really want to guide you and give you pass a lot of information on to you that we have found in the process. Maybe it's something that we didn't get that we, when our younger selves wish that we would have had, maybe it's something that we just feel compelled or propelled to do. So regardless of what it is, we are here for you every step of the way at SuccessfulStylistAcademy.com and make sure that you visit us for our next podcast up and coming. Our number seven show is going to be with Jennifer Greeny. She's going to be talking about financial success for hairstylists. You will not want to miss this because this is going to help you no matter, again, no matter if you are a commission stylist, booth renter, or if you are independent or even a salon owner, there is something for each one of you to get out of this financial journey with Jennifer Greeny because she specializes in this. So 
Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And we will see you at the next show. Thank you. Bye, everybody.